is a live show highlights video and in it I'll be showing you how to apply the 5E's lesson plan when building a HyperDoc and I'll also get into the nuts and bolts of how to put one together. So this video is going to be helpful for you if you're just getting started and want to know the basics of how to build a HyperDoc from scratch. My name is Sam Carey and this is my YouTube channel for the new EdTech Classroom. Looking first at a lesson plan design that you would do in a Google Doc. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend just jumping into Google Slides first. The reason for that is because when you're designing lessons, I do think it's important to be able to, to visually see in one place how a lesson is going to progress across a sequence. So if you're building it in Google Slides just kind of right off the bat, then that can be difficult to see just because of the design. So my first piece of advice is that you don't use the Google Slides templates. I would recommend that you start with a third party program. So the two that I really like are Slides Mania and Slides Carnival. They're both awesome places to get cool looking slides and just taking a template from one of these third party websites is gonna make your slides look so much better already. And you'll see that they have holiday type theme slides and things like that. I would try if you can to see if you can find a slide that a slide deck that relates in some way to the lesson that you're doing that can kind of just add an element of, of fun to the slides. When you're making a slide, you want, you do want to focus on how it looks. Presentation matters. Picking a, a slide that looks kind of fun is definitely going to just add a slight upgrade in your engagement. Today, I'm going to show a lesson around whether or not art can be used to influence people's political beliefs. So that will be the essential question that students will be answering. And so today I just wanna to find a template that looks a little bit artistic. All you need to do when you go to a website uh, like Slides Carnival or Slides Mania is check out templates from the top here. So you could look at uh, different categories. And then when you find something that you want, you just need to click on it, go to preview and download. And then you can either get a PowerPoint template or you can get a Google Slides template. The first thing I do is just click X on that and then go over here and give it a name. So you'll wanna give it the name of your lesson. I'll just name it art and politics right now. And then you'll see that you essentially have a whole slide deck here. So you can take all of these slides if you wanted and just directly edit them. You can also still use the regular slide adder. So you can go up here uh, to bring in new slides and these will bring in the slide layouts that don't have the additions necessarily. So today I am going to show you a few uh, different add-ons and extensions that you can use with Google Slides. And one of them is this add-on and it is the flat icon add-on. Now flat icon is basically just going to allow you to bring in some fun icons and this is a really quick and easy way to personalize and make your slides look a little bit better and another add-on is magic rainbow unicorn slides so what this allows you to do is basically take text and make it into a rainbow color. I also like the Unsplash images slide add-on. This is one you don't have to have. You could just get an image from Unsplash, but Unsplash just has kind of cooler images, more artistic. They're also copyright free. So you don't have to worry about violating copyright with getting Google images. Though if you're just using it for teaching, you don't really need to worry about that. I love Bitmoji. Bitmoji is definitely a big part, or my Bitmoji is a big part of how I put together my Google Slides lessons. And I also like the GIF extension for Chrome. So what I'll do is I'll go back here and I'll look at my essential question. Actually, I'm not gonna use this exact lesson, but just to show you, I could, copy and paste it if I wanted. Then I'm going to go over here and I'll write in my essential question to start. Now, one is not so much about presentation, but more about tracking what you're doing and making sure that you have all the elements that you want to include. And that's to actually put a little box at the top that indicates what part of the lesson you're in. So here, what I'm going to do is add a text box just up at the top here, I'm basically, this This is more for me, actually. I'm going to remind myself of where I am in the lesson. 
I'm gonna backfill this by using the fill color here. And I'll do something like white so it's a little bit more visible. I can make the text bold here, then just size it down a little bit. So one thing that I'm going to do here is bring in a Bitmoji. And since it's a question, I like to bring in these types of Bitmojis, you know, that have like a me thinking about something. So I'm gonna pull this one in where I'm considering this question. Okay, so I have this little thinking face here. And what I'm thinking is, you know, just to make this look a little bit more interesting, rather than just have the text here kind of sitting not really doing anything, I'm gonna add a thought bubble. By going up here to insert, you can go to insert shape callouts, and you'll see here that there's a little thought bubble. If you click on that, what that will allow you to do is drag, and so you'll see I can get a thought bubble there. Then if you drag the little corner here, that will actually allow you to like drag it over to your head, cut the text, and I'll put the text right here on top of the thought bubble. I'm gonna drag that around. Now, I kind of also don't really like that gray background there. So here I'm going to fill this. I'll fill it with white. I'm going to go up to the border color. I want that to be black and I want it to be a little bit thicker. So I'm gonna go here to border weight and just make that a little bit thicker. I've already built an initial slide that just looks slightly more interesting for students. For the next slide, I always include the learning targets. Here, I'm gonna go up to the add new slide and I'm just going to bring in this title with one column. And I'll start here by just adding learning targets and then I'm going to write them in. And I'll go up here to bullet points. First of all, one of the things that you'll notice here, right, is that it's boring. It looks boring. One thing that you can do to just make it slightly more interesting here is bring in an icon. So for learning targets, you can go up here to add-ons, go to the flat icon add-on. You can see I already have it pulled up here, but I'm going to search for a target. So to get one, you just click on it and then click insert. And that's going to bring that in and then you can resize it, drag it around wherever you want it to go. Now we're going to move on to the actual material. So the first thing that students are going to do here uh, will be the engage phase of the lesson. I'm gonna pick this slide just because I like that it kind of has an emphasis in the center. Then go up here and make sure that I've included that this is the engage phase. Now, for this slide, I'm just going to take this text and I'm going to write over it. I'm actually going to add um, some different text boxes here. Now, what I want to do is push students over to another program where they're actually going to do an activity. So the whole point of a hyperdoc is basically that you're curating different uh, tech programs. You're putting together a lesson strategically so that students can ultimately achieve a learning target. What I did here is I created a Jamboard, very basic. I just added some sticky notes with the words, and then I used the shapes tool here to bring in some boxes. Then just make sure here under share. So you wanna make sure that you have set the share uh, restrictions appropriately so that anyone with the link can access it. Copy this link. Then I'm going to go back to my slide. And there are a couple ways you can do this, but here what I'm gonna do is just highlight that. And just to show you here, I'll go up here to insert link. You could also right click or go to insert link here. And then what I'll do, paste that link in, click apply. We're going to move into an explore phase. So here I'm going to grab this slide down here. And one of the reasons I'm choosing this one is just, you notice that I haven't brought in any images yet. So I wanna just mix it up. Now, this again, obviously doesn't relate this image over here, right? So the way that you can change this is, is I'll go here to background. Notice how right now um, it has a color, it has an image. What I'm gonna do is choose an image here. I can go to Google image search. I'll go ahead and bring in an image of a painting that is intended to impact people's political belief, then click insert. And you'll notice how it already brings it over uh, on this side of the slides. So what I did is I created a frame. I brought in an image of Guernica, just brought in some additional paintings that students would be making observations about and inferences about. I'll copy that link. I'm gonna go here, 
turn this into a hyperlink. So the purpose of having this kind of wide open canvas here is that you can essentially fully customize it however you would like. The next part is uh, what I'm going to do here is give students some instructions. I want them to actually engage with group members here. I could leave it like this. Again, not so bad. Uh, the instructions are there. Uh, it's not awful, but I'm going to show you how to make this look a little bit better. What students are going to do here is write their answers in these boxes. And the first thing I want to do is actually just indicate in these boxes. So I'm going to go over here to insert and I'm going to insert an arrow. What this will allow me to do here is draw an arrow. Now you might be thinking, how do they know who my group member is? So what I did here is I created a Google Doc. In this Google Doc, you could basically continue to mix up uh, which group a student is in. Get the shareable link, leave it as view only, go here to copy the link. I will insert this link. Already, I've now created a slide where students can type directly on the slide. They don't have to go over to some external document and write their answers. I have pointed out where they need to, to do that and just added some of these little visual cues. Another way to just kind of make it a little bit more interesting is to go up here to Giphy. You can search uh, in Giphy. You can just drag and drop that in. The GIFs, like the Bitmojis, not necessary, but just something you know that, that I like to do for fun. Now what we're going to do is move over to the elaborate phase. I'll indicate to them up here at the top what they're going to do. So I'll remind myself that here they're, they're going to research and locate pieces of political art. Then here I'm just going to write out some instructions for what they're going to do. Then the activity will be to post what they found to Padlet. It would also be an appropriate part of the lesson to do something like record a video in Loom or Screencastify and then bring that link in. You're just going to copy that link, you're going to bring that in, and you're going to link that here so that students can watch a little mini lesson. Two other elements actually that I want to add to this slide deck here, because again, this is kind of boring, is an icon. And I'm going to find a little art palette that I found here. I could search for art palette. I'm going to bring that one in Let's go up here to Bitmoji. I might want to pull something else in. So I found this one, for example, me and the computer uh, that I'm going to drag and drop in to show an element of researching. All right. So there, you know, I've taken what is, it's, it's not that it's super fancy and interesting now, but made it a little bit more interesting. Now for the last part of this lesson, we're going to have students make an argument, bring in another slide. And here I'll do this two columns slide. One of the reasons why I wanted to show this is because I'm going to show you how you can link it back to a specific assignment in Google Classroom where students could actually post this response. Remember I told you about the, in the beginning, if you were here, the add-on magic rainbow unicorn slides. So I'm going to open this up. That will just turn this into a little rainbow word. So, you know, not a big deal, but again, just a little element that can make this a little bit more fun. First, just on a technical level, what I need to do is get the link to where they would actually be posting this response. What I did here in Google Classroom in this demo Google Classroom account is create a question. So the question here is, can art change people's political beliefs? And when students respond, I, I set it up so that they would be able to respond to each other's questions. So what I'm going to do is go here to the three dots right next to the assignment. I'm going to copy the link. Then I'm going to paste that link in. And I hope that you learn just a little bit about how to make slides a little bit more fun. I'm by no means slides master designer or anything like that. There's just a couple of tricks that you can do to make them a little bit more interesting for students.